Hello again. I hope everything is going well with you today. Today we're going to take a little bit of a break from the algebra and look at the idea of prime factorization and common multiples. The first thing we want to do is talk about factors. We already know that factors are numbers that are multiplied and the result of the multiplication is called the product. If we think of this process in reverse, a factor divides into the product, and of course it will divide in evenly, leaving no remainder. If we were asked about the factors of 36, we would be trying to find numbers that divide into 36. And so what we would do is think about numbers that create 36 when they're multiplied. So for example, um, 1 times 36 is 36. So we have 1. And I'm going to put 36 way over here so that I can put my factors in numerical order. Let's see, how else can we make 36? With 2, 2 times 18 is 36. 2 and 18 are then both factors of 36. How about 3? 3 times 12 is 36. So 3 and 12 are both factors of 36. 4 is a factor of 36 because 4 times 9 gives us 36. 5 is not a factor of 36. If we tried to divide 36 by 5, we would have a remainder. 5 goes into 36 7 times. 7 times 5 is 35, and we'd have 1 left over. But 6 is a factor of 36. 6 times 6 gives us 36, so we found the middle number here. And now we have an entire list of factors of 36. So a factor is a number that divides into the other number without a remainder. Continuing with our vocabulary, we can talk about a number that has more than two different factors. And this would be called a composite number. So 36 is an example of a composite number. And we usually just say is composite. Slide up a little bit here. A number with exactly two different factors, one and itself, is called a prime number. So for example, 7 is a prime number. 1 times 7 will give us 7, but we don't have any other whole numbers that multiply together to give 7 as the product. What about the number 1? Is the number 1 composite? Well, no. It's kind of small. 1 times what would give you 1? That would be 1 times 1. Does that mean that 1 is prime? Well, no, not really because prime says we have to have two different factors. So the number one is neither. It is neither prime nor composite. So our task for the moment is going to be to figure out what are all of the prime numbers less than 100. Since 1 is neither prime nor composite, we can cross 1 off the list. 2 is prime. 1 times 2 is 2, and there's no other way to make 2 by multiplying whole numbers. And that means that anything that 2 goes into will be composite. So all of these even numbers are composite. So 4 is composite, 6 is composite, 8 is composite, so is 10 and 12, 14, 16, 18. As a matter of fact, we can cross off all the numbers in these columns. Go ahead and do that. If I finish before you do, just pause the recording and start it over again when you are done.
There. All the even numbers are crossed off. Every number that has 2 as a factor would be composite. So let's move on to the next one. 3 is also prime. So we want to cross off all the numbers that have 3 as a factor. So 6 is already crossed off, but we can get rid of 9. 12 is crossed off, but we can get rid of 15. 16 is 18 is crossed off. 19, 20, 21, we can get rid of 21. 21 is 3 times 7. 3 times 8 is 24. That's already crossed off. 3 times 9 is 27. Let's get rid of it. 3 times 10 is 30. That's already gone. 3 times 11 is 33. Let's cross that one off. And so every third number in this list, we're going to make sure it gets crossed off. 36, 39, 42, 45, 48, 51, 54, 57, 60, 63, 66, 69, 72, 75, 78, 81, 84, 87, 90, 93, 96, and 99. So now every number that is not, uh, sorry, every number that is a multiple of 3 has been crossed off our list. What about 5? Is 5 prime? Yes. 1 times 5 is 5, and there are no other whole numbers that can multiply together to make 5. So everything that has 5 as a factor has to cross off our list. 5, 10 is already gone, 15 is already gone, 20, 25, 30, 35. Really, we just want to go right down this 5's column and cross off all of these numbers that end in 5. And make sure, of course, that all the numbers that end in 0 are already crossed off. But they were, because they also had 2 as a factor. All right, what about 7? Is 7 prime? Yeah, I think that one is. Of course it is. 1 times 7 is 7. There's no other way to make 7 by multiplying whole numbers together. So now we want to cross off all the multiples of 7. Let's see. 7 times 2 is 14. That's already crossed off. 7 times 3 is 21. That's already crossed off. 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 6 is 42. 7 times 7 is 49. Oh, we can cross that one off. 7 times 8 is 56, 7 times 9 is 63, 7 times 10 is 70, 7 times 11 is 77, oh we can cross that one off. 7 times 12 is 84, 7 times 13 is 91, we can cross that off, and 7 times 14 is 98, and 98 is already gone. What else do we have? 11 is prime. We don't have any other whole numbers that multiply to 11 besides 1 and 11. And we can check to make sure that the multiples of 11 are crossed off. 22 is crossed off, 33 is crossed off, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, and 99 are all crossed off. 99 is 9 times 11, and the 9 is less than 11, so this is all the work we have to do to figure out the prime numbers that are less than 100. Everything that hasn't been crossed off yet is prime. So let's find all of those and circle them. This table has become a little bit hard to read. So um, pause your recording here 
and let's come off to the side and make a list of all the prime numbers that are less than 100. And when you get done, right, we're looking for all those circled numbers. When you finish, um, come back to the recording. Okay, so your list should look like mine. You should have 24 numbers in the list. And these should definitely be ones that are worth your time to memorize and be able to recognize. Okay, moving along, we add another word to our vocabulary list. We're talking about the prime factorization. We know that factors are things that we multiply together. So when we say a prime factorization of a number, what this means is to express the number as a product. A product of primes. So we want to know which primes multiplied together will give us that number. And of course, sometimes we're going to need more than two different numbers. Let's take a look. The prime factorization of 36. 36 should be a rather familiar number to you. You can think of 36 a lot of different ways. Maybe you think that 36 can be broken down as 4 times 9, which of course it can but neither 4 nor 9 are prime. But then we can break up the 4 and say 4 is 2 times 2 and 9, whoops, 9 is 3 times 3. 2 and 3 are now both prime. And so 36 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 and that would be a prime factorization. If you didn't see 36 as 4 times 9, that's fine. There are other ways to think of 36. Perhaps you see 36 as 2 times 18. 2 is prime, so we can leave it alone. But 18 is not. 18 is composite. 18 breaks down into 3 times 6. But 6 is not prime, so we can break this down a little further. 6 is 2 times 3. A long time ago, when I first learned this, we used what's called a factor tree. And maybe you've seen this before. You start with 36, and I break it down any way that I can think of. This time I think of 36 as 3 times 12. If I find a prime number, I circle it so I don't lose track of it. The composite numbers, I break down a little further. 12 is 6 times 2. 2 is prime, so I'll circle it. 6 can break down is 3 times 2. And of course, 3 and 2 are both prime. No matter which way you look at this, we get exactly the same answer. 36 is made by multiplying two twos and two threes. In other words, it's 2 squared multiplied by 3 squared. Don't worry if you can't immediately think of the prime factorization of a number. Being able to determine any factor of a number will break it down into smaller pieces, and the smaller pieces are likely to be more manageable and more familiar to us. Go with what you know, and then look at it again and see if we can break it down any further. It might help if we talked about some divisibility rules. How do you tell if a number is divisible by another one? There are some nice patterns that happen if we're talking about whether or not a number is divisible by 2. All the numbers that are divisible by 2 end, so a number is divisible by 2 if it ends in 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0. In other words, all even numbers. are divisible by 2. You probably knew that one. You might not be familiar with 
how to check to see if a number is divisible by 3. It's kind of an interesting thing. A number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. This is a property that we wouldn't actually expect, but it works. Here's what I mean. Suppose we had a number like 7,698. I can tell you just by looking that 7,698 is divisible by 3. And I know because 7 plus 6 plus 9 plus 8 is 30. And 30 is divisible by 3. It's kind of a cool property of 3's. Um, let's see, how about the next one? A number is divisible by 4 if the last two digits are divisible by 4. So, for example, 29,624 is divisible by 4. All I have to do is look at these last two digits. 4 goes into 24, so 4 goes into 29,624. The divisibility rule for 5, you probably already know. A number is divisible by 5 if it ends in 0 or 5. A number is divisible by 6, well, if, it, if it's divisible by the things that make 6. If it is divisible by 2, and by 3. And finally, you probably already know that a number is divisible by 10 if it ends in 0. Let's see if we can't put some of these rules to work. Scroll down the page. We would like to find the prime factorization of 100, sorry, 12,250. And I like a lot of space, so I'm going to use a factor tree. 12,250. What goes in there? I can already tell that 2 goes into 12,250 because it ends in a 0, but so does 5 and so does 10. I would like to use the largest number I can think of that's going to be a factor of 12,250. So I'm going to split this up into 10 times 1,225. Neither of these is prime, but I know how 10 breaks down. 10 is 2 times 5. Both of those are prime, so I'll circle them. 1,225, well, 5 goes in there because it ends in 5. How many times? Let's take our calculator. 1,200. 25 divide by 5 and find out that it goes in there 245 times which is clearly not prime because it ends in 5 so we can break it up into 5 times something we'll take that answer divide by 5 and find that that is 5 times 49 and 49 is a number I know that's 7 times 7 and I know that 7 is prime. There, we're done. So, 1,000, sorry, 12,000, I keep trying to missay that word, 12,250 is equal to 2, and I only have one factor of 2, so we'll leave that alone, multiplied by 5, but I have 1, 2, 3 factors of 5, so that's going to be 5 to the third power, 
and also multiplied by 7, I have two factors of 7, so that will be 7 squared. If we check this on our calculator, we would say 2 times 5 to the third power, come out of that exponent, times 7 to the second power, and make sure we get the number that we started with, which of course we do. All right, what next? Let's flip the page and see. Ah, multiples. Multiples are obtained by multiplying, which you would probably expect from the name. So to create a multiple, let's see, multiples are created. by multiplying by a natural number. And you'll remember natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, not 0, not negative, not decimals. So if we were talking about multiples of 12, we would say 12 times 1 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, 12 times 3 is 36, and we could keep on adding 12s to find more multiples. So we have 48, 60, 72, 84, 96, 108, on and on and on. Infinitely many multiples of 12. And of course we can do the same thing with 9. Take a second, pause the recording, write down as many multiples of 9 as you can until you start running off the page, and then come back to the recording. Alright, there's my list. I went all the way up to 108 and then I ran out of room. The thing we want to do now is compare both lists. I see that 36 is in both lists. Are there any other numbers that these lists have in common? Um, oh, 72 is in both lists, and so is 108. And you'll notice that there's a pattern. Every third number in the first list has been highlighted. Every fourth number in the second list has been highlighted. So if we made these lists longer, we would of course find lots more values that these numbers, oh, sorry, that these lists have in common. These are called common multiples. So 36, 72, 108 are all common multiples of 12 and 9. But we could find more. There are infinitely many. common multiples of 12 and 9. And since this list is so long, we really couldn't pick out one number as being more important than the other, except for the one that is the smallest in the list. The least common multiple of a set of numbers is the smallest of all the possible common multiples. So for us, when we're looking at 9 and 12, the least common multiple is 36. Okay, how could we find the least common multiple of 12 and 10? Well, we could do something sort of like what we just did and start listing off multiples until we had a common value from both lists. 12 and 10 are relatively small. Here's a little bit of a faster way to do it. Um, I would do this in my head. I'm just uh, going to write this down so that you can see what I'm talking about. Let's look at multiples of 12. I'm picking 12 because it's the larger number. And then after we find a multiple of 12, We're going to ask ourselves if it's divisible by the other number. 
why not start off small? 12 times 1, that's 12. Is it divisible by 10? No. 12 times 2, that's 24. Divisible by 10? No. 12 times 3, that's 36. Divisible by 10? No. 12 times 4, that's 48. Is that divisible by 10? No. 12 times 5 is 60. Is that divisible by 10? Yes. And like I said, this is something that I would think to myself in my head if I were checking for common multiples. I've just written it down here so you have a nice systematic thing to look at inside your notes. At any rate, the least common multiple of 12 and 10 is 60. I'm sure you can tell looking at lists of multiples is not always the best way to go. It's handy when the numbers are sort of small or when the numbers are familiar to us. But once they get past that, we should probably develop a different option. The other alternative is to look at the prime factorization of each number. And to start off with, we're going to do 12 and 10 again just because we already know the answer. The prime factorization of 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. Right, 2 times 2 is 2 squared, that's 4, times 3 gives us 12. The prime factorization of 10 is 2 times 5. And I'm going to move this 5 over so that I have all of the factors lined up in sort of what we might call common columns. And as it turns out, let me scroll up here a little bit, the least common multiple of a set of numbers contains all the prime factors that you see in each prime factorization. And the number of times we use that factor is determined by whichever one has the largest exponent. All right, let's 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 do this here. I probably didn't say that in the best way. When I look at these prime factorizations, I see twos, I see threes, and I see fives. So the least common multiple is going to use twos, threes, and fives. The question is, how many twos do I need? 10 uses one two, 12 uses two twos. We're going to pick the one that has the largest amount. So I'll have two squared as part of my least common multiple. I see a three. I need one. I also need a 5. And when we get done, we have 2 squared times 3 times 5, which gives us 60. So what we do is we look at all of the prime factors, we pick out the one that has the greatest exponent, and use that many factors of it. Hmm. I'm not sure that I said that very well, so let's try a bigger example and maybe it will be more helpful. We would like to find the least common multiple of 168 and 196. Let's start by finding the prime factorization. I know, these look like big numbers, but really they're not so bad. Let's check it out. 168. Well, 168 is even. I can certainly divide it by 2. 2 goes into 168 84 times. 2 is prime, so I'll circle it. 84 that's divisible by 4. 4 goes into 84 21 times. 4 is not prime. It breaks down into 2 times 2. 21 is not prime. It breaks down into 3 times 7. So 168 is equal to 2 cubed, because I have 3 factors of 2, times 3, times 7. Your job is to find the prime factorization of 196. Pause the recording, come back when you're done. Okay, here's what I did. 196 is divisible by 2. 2 goes into 196 98 times. 98 is divisible by 2. 2 goes into 98, 49 times. 
49 is 7 times 7. So 196 is equal to 2 squared times 7 squared. The least common multiple, and we often abbreviate this with LCM for least common multiple, is going to need 2s, 3s, and 7s. How many 2s are we going to need? Well, I am going to compare 2 to the third power to 2 to the second power, and I'm going to pick the one that has the higher exponent. So I need three factors of two in my least common multiple. I'm going to need some threes, but only one of them. That's enough. We're trying to keep it as small as possible, so we don't want to put in more stuff than we need. And I'm also going to need some sevens. I have one factor of seven in 168, but two factors of seven in 196. I'm going to use that one because it has the higher exponent, times 7 squared. Let's see what that's worth. 2 cubed times 3 times 7 squared. Whoops, that's not right, is it? That's all got up there in the exponent. Let's clear that. 2 cubed, use that arrow key, come out of the exponent, times 3 times 7 squared. 1,176. You might want to know, if you took 1,176 and divided by 168, would it go in evenly? It would. It would go in 7 times. If you took 1,176 and divided by 196, would that go in evenly? It would. It would go in six times. That's our least common multiple. Okay, so hopefully that second example helped a little bit more. Good luck with your homework, and we'll be talking. Take care. Bye-bye.